Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, back to uh, what I, I mentioned as uh, initiative, uh, maybe I can answer the question through another example of, of cooperation that we tried to uh, establish uh, in the last uh, one and a half year. Uh, it's a pure South-South cooperation example. Uh, well, we uh, saw the need of contextualizing this cooperation. Because it's very important when we talk about exchange of experience to put countries with uh, sharing the same uh, challenges, sharing the same uh, bottlenecks, and sharing the same vision. Uh, therefore, uh, we established uh, an alliance uh, for Africa uh, called Industry uh, 4.0 Alliance for Industry 4.0 and Smart Manufacturing Alliance, uh, ASMA in short. And this alliance is built around six pillars. The first pillar is how to support application of the new digital technologies and artificial intelligence for industry. So it's about supporting industry to adopt those technologies. The second pillar is about supporting the continental technology providers. We discovered that there are a huge amount of technology providers. South-South uh, and Triangle Cooperation to ensure efficient technology and knowledge transfer on mutually agreed terms while also safeguarding the foundations of local innovation mechanisms. And what has been the experience of European Commission uh, development assistance in that respect. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much uh, for the question. I think it's quite a difficult one. Uh, what are the most effective mechanisms, especially in the context of digital governance, where we've only been working, I would say, for the last couple of years um, in our uh, international cooperation. Uh, but uh, let's give it a try. So I think um, talking about mechanism, uh, maybe back, back to, to basics, um, a lot of what we are working on with our partner countries is, is based is located under our global gateway investment uh, strategy and um, this global gateway instrument uh, does cater also for the different types of uh, triangular and south-south cooperation that I mentioned before so the idea of the, the global gateway is to, to offer a an, an alternative um, offering to partner countries to, to work on, on investments, but not only on a hard infrastructure, also on investments in education, skills, um, policy, regulatory uh, support, uh, financing, and so on. Now, the core element here is, I would say, sustainability. It was mentioned earlier today, um, because we're talking about effective mechanisms, right? So the mechanism should be sustainable, uh, that, that's why I mention it. And when we talk about sustainability in Global Gateway, we, we mean um, financially sustainable for, for the different partners involved, uh, environmentally sustainable, but also sustainable. by India, by the Philippines, who have new technologies, which at that point in time, they were really lagging behind. And we have seen this happening. But to answer your question, Obviously, there should be determination, there should be um, political will, there should be geopolitical peace and stability. And uh, I would say, I'm not talking about the capacity building, the academia, the private sector and the economy, and so on. but really and truly, it's you have to put your heart into it. As we've seen, I mentioned those countries because they have, for example, I was impressed by the Philippines in having, giving the empowerment to, to, to the female sectors with all those islands and all. Of digital development or technological development has increased considerably. And not just awareness, it has also translated to uh, I would say a strong political support that was perhaps not there uh, 15 or, or 20 years ago, but also the awareness uh, on the importance of building an independent digital state. 
So these questions around how do we guarantee connectivity, how do we make sure that we do not, in our, let's say, compute power, become dependent on one or the other country or one or the other uh, company. These questions, I believe, are much higher in the agenda of all the countries that we have collaborated uh, uh, with recently than they were ever before. And I would say that this is a, a very important, uh, uh, let's say, movement or step in this uh, digitalization. And I have to say also that I have personally seen very impressive uh, uh, fast developments uh, among our partners, uh, some of which uh, can also uh, learn ourselves here, uh, here in, uh, in Estonia. But of course, there have been also some uh, shortcomings into how we have collaborated, and I addressed actually some of them in my very opening uh, statement. And uh, one of them is really related to the fact that often we forget the basics in digitalization. New terms come, new trends merge, uh, and we forget that sometimes we cannot leapfrog some steps before we have the basics set. So for many years, uh, digitalizing data, building public registries, uh, how to build interoperability between these public registries, how to digitally authenticate people. So I would say that it's very core building blocks of digitalization where I wouldn't say neglected, but they were not really high on the agenda because new Google terms emerged, the blockchain, uh, AI that we all talk about, it, but actually not having the base infrastructure to support that. Uh, but still I would say that uh, the discourse of the public goods is the public infrastructure that we recently see uh, emerging in the globe has put emphasis, em emphasis on this uh, uh, very core that sometimes maybe is a boring when you want to be a cool digital minister, you don't want to deal with these basics that we all know about, but you want to do something new. The other thing that I also refer to is actually a lot of application in our, uh, in our development.